So the biggest surprise that I had in this project, um, so this is, uh, it's pretty abstract. So let me just see if I can land this right. So the biggest surprise was actually on my first trip, I went to um, Death Valley National Park and I'm super excited to begin my project. It's been a lot sort of planned and I get there and I find this great landscape. I get out of my car and I load up Pokemon Go. I grab my iPad and I load it up and I see that there's no cell phone reception. And in order to use Pokemon Go anywhere, you need data service. And there was no data service in the national park. And I thought, oh, how many more national parks are there on my list to complete this project that are not gonna have data signal? It's something that I didn't think about. So I'm a bit actually nervous about it because I think my whole project's gonna crumble. So I go back to my hotel at sort of this lodge in the, in the desert there. And there's a park ranger in, in the hotel. And I actually, I ask, I say, where can I go in the national park to have cell phone service, which is totally stupid to ask a park ranger that. So, but she was kind and she says, there's a place called Dante's Point or Dante's View. It's up, it's on top of a, high elevated mountain. Um, and with the wind, uh, cell phone service kind of comes and goes. So check it out. So get in my car, go up to the hill in the parking lot up there. And I'm looking at my iPad, iPad and it says um, no service. And sure enough, boom, service comes in and I'm seeing the landscape then it goes out again. I'm like, oh, it's going to be complicated. So I'm sitting there waiting for it to come back. And it sort of dawns on me there as I'm waiting. I think, wait a second. The reason why I'm not seeing the landscape is because there's no cell service. But when the cell ser service comes in, I'm seeing it. So that means that the, the Pokemon Go imagery is already present. It just hasn't, you need, you need cell service to manifest that landscape, to make it real. And I realized that all over the planet, whether there's cell service or not in whatever area, it doesn't matter. The Pokemon Go sort of fabric or thought form has already blanketed the entire planet. All that's needed are cell phone towers to manifest it. And that's how thought forms work. Thought forms are sort of, they're in the ethers. I mean, anyone who thinks they've had an original thought before, think again. I mean, it's yours for the picking. So this thought form has sort of descended with gravity and it had reached this level sort of right above our heads where all that was needed was someone to just sort of pull it down, a cell phone tower to manifest it. And that's how it works with any thought form, ideologies, religions, belief systems. It's all about how many people do we have scattered around the planet acting like cell phone towers to actually pull that information down and manifest it as a reality, or should I say virtual reality around the planet. So that was really the most shocking moment. And um, funny enough, I had read once about a Pokemon Go hack where you could actually, you download this app and you can fake the location on your iPad. So I was, I could literally sit on my couch. So I downloaded it and I was literally on my couch in Spain and I teleported my avatar into Death Valley to that original place where I couldn't see the image. And I'm sitting there and my iPad thinks I'm there and I see the Pokemon Go landscape that no one can see when they're actually there. So it was almost like, it's not that I was reading the future, but in, in a sense, it, in a sense, it was like a psychic ability because I was seeing if the human continues on this trajectory, this is what's going to manifest. And I was getting a preview of that. And this is nothing new. This happens all the time. I mean, um, Aldous Huxley, Brave New World, uh, George Orwell, 1984. I mean, they were all, they had an awareness about something, about where the planet was moving, and they were trying to bring a warning down to warn us. And have we been warned? I guess. Have we taken it seriously? Probably not enough, which is why I'm doing this project. If we had taken it seriously, I probably wouldn't have to do any of this, right? So, and that's what this project is about. It's about, it's about seeing where humanity is and what's coming and setting a warning. And I can tell you right now, no joke, our humanity is at stake. And I can also tell you, 1984 may not have been 1984, but from what I'm seeing, 2084 will be 1984.